Welcome everyone to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Star Trek The Next Generation Season 5, Episode 11, it's called Hero Worship, so full spoilers for the episode, as always, this one features Data bonding with a young boy, uh, well I say young boy, he's like, I don't know, 12 or something, 10, 12, so. Something that it's as close as a ten, but I mean, he's 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 not tiny. He's he's not like he's definitively still a child, not a teenager. Yes, okay, sure. But he's in the upper end of still a child. Sure. <laughs> so with that. Uh, he's the sole survivor. This kid, because they find this this damaged ship, Federation ship has has been heavily damaged. The, the front part of the the ship is just completely missing. You know, there's been like an explosion or something. Uh, at the front uh, where, the, where the bridge is and this kid is the sole survivor he's found when they're not expecting to find anyone they send the away team over and it's like hey keep those uh those transporter beams locked on at all times because this ship might just start to crumble at any point and they find this kid and the kid's basically uh, you know having PTSD he's struggling to deal with what happened admitting what's happened that his parents are dead who because they were both on the ship and he bonds with Data and kind of sees an appeal in Data and ultimately begins to mimic Data and starts to pretend that he is also an android and that he has no feelings. Uh, obviously, that emotional part of the story is quite obvious in terms of its symbolism, how to understand it. You know, he's he wishes he didn't feel anything, so he's pretending to not feel anything. Uh, it, it, it doesn't take a, uh, a Troy-level counsellor to, to figure that out. I'm struggling to define in my head the the leap from no, you know, knowledge in psychology to Troy level of knowledge in psychology and what the gap is between that, because I'm not convinced as much of one. That's a fair point. It might be a low... Uh, that might be pretty low on the on the ladder of things. I, I, I love it. There's a scene in this where she's t t spoken to the kid once and she comes to the bridge to talk to Picard and co. And Picard and that are asking a bunch of questions about, like, you know, what did he see? What happened to his parents? How is he feeling? You know, and there's a question as well that, like, the kid at one point said there was, like, invaders on board with helmets, with purple helmets or something like that. And obviously we hear this at the start and we're like, purple helmets? Who could, who could that be? Who is he talking about? What, what alien race is this? And, but... Jordy's like, nah, none of the stuff on the ship implies that there was anyone, like, on board. No one boarded the ship. No no one invaded. And Picard's like, is it possible you could be lying? And looks at Troy. And every question she's asked in this scene, including this one, is it possible he could be lying, is basically met with some excuse as to why... In this case, no, I, I know, he's, he's too traumatically... You know, his, his emotions are all over the place, I can't tell. Who, who can tell? Yeah, may yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I'm struggling to get a read on him right now because of what he's been through. I'm like, yes, uh, it definitely doesn't need to take <laughs> a, a, empathic abilities to know that a approximately ten year old child having gone through a traumatic event might make something up just to to feel a bit better. <laughs> I just, how many situations have we been in where there's not a reason why it's difficult to read someone with our empath abilities? Like almost every time, there's a reason why. Oh, it's tough, difficult to tell because of this and this. Like, what are the perfect conditions in which you just get a reading and the reading is accurate? <laughs> what is that perfect condition? In the bar. What with someone <laughs> is thirsty? I, I yeah. sense he's very thirsty, Captain. Oh, she got uh, it in one! All I'm saying is, after they've had a few drinks, she seems to be fine reading them there. <laughs> <laughs> the inebriation helps. Uh, yeah. well, she, maybe she should start to have a, just, a, just a little drink to get a buzz going when she's working, maybe. When she's working with her patients. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Let's move her so. office to the bar. So that's the, the main thing that's set up in the episode. And a lot of the scenes we're going to talk about really uh, are, are Data and the kid and how the kid decides to mimic Data. Um, he does this in body language. Uh, he, he, he does it over the top, don't get me wrong, but you can't deny that the head tilting thing that he's doing is, is oh yeah, he, he's, that's based on Data. You, you understand what it's meant yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah he, he does that. Uh, and he's, he's speaking like Data, he's saying things like... Uh, the first one that put it in my head was a firm. That's a Terminator thing, but like a similar idea where was the sort of language that Data would use to like describe like, oh, that'll be acceptable. That's built within operational parameters, and that's how he describes how he feels about things. Uh, and 
Troy, I mean, to, to Troy's credit, she doesn't overreact to this. She understands this is a coping mechanism and she kind of like indulges it and encourages everyone else to kind of go along with it for the time being. Uh, and Picard orders Data to, to sort of encourage us as well and kind of, you know, inc- you know let, let him be the best android he can be, which results in the Data brushing his hair so that it's gelled back like his and other little things like that. And some of this, I, I think, works well enough in the sense that this kid, like, when he finds out that Data doesn't need to sleep, he then tries to pretend that he also doesn't need to sleep. So we get kind of what I would call a fairly sweet scene of, like, they're, they're painting side by, side by side. And Data, of course, does this throughout the night, you know, relative to his working hours because he doesn't need to sleep. So he just has hobbies that he does when everyone else is asleep. And Nice. Yeah, but the kid, of course, just kind of falls asleep in his chair <laughs> yeah. because he just can't do it. He's because he's a human, and it's okay. okay. There's, there's some nice little moments like this. Reminded me of the um the episode of uh, American Dad. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm, uh, Stan takes some pills, some experimental pills that means he don't need to. Also, there is a link because Patrick Stewart is is, is his boss in that show, so there, there's a link here. Oh, very good. Uh, uh, he takes some experimental pills, which means he doesn't need to sleep at all, and it's just like. You know, right, do your hobbies. And I'm like, must be nice. <laughs> yeah, and there's an all scene where they go to the bar and Data doesn't need to eat anything. And of course, the kid conveniently says, uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, Androids don't need to eat. But occasionally, we might like to taste things. <laughs> and, you know, cause I think Troy offers him something. And he says no at first, but he sees like a fancy Sunday go past. You know, with the waiter, and he's like, uh, well, maybe, maybe I could make an exception and have, have something nice. So, oh, all this works well enough. I don't think the episode's like a standout episode by any means. Um, it's pretty. It's not terrible. I think I, I probably like it less than you in general, just because I tend to dislike these sorts of, not even just episodes of Trek, just these sorts of stories. You know, with with kids doing this, it, it bores me as a rule. I'm not, I mean, I'm not super into it necessarily, but I, I, I think, because I was a little bit worried early on that this was going to be Data bonding with a kid, and we've already had Data having his own child, we've already had Data kind of learning some valuable lessons. I think the spinning this that made it feel more distinct and like, okay, okay, I see why they thought this was worth doing, is because this is a kid who's went through trauma, and Data doesn't understand that. Yeah, I'll get that, because um, I remember when we read the, the you know, next time on, we, we thought, oh, you know, Data being a parent, we've kind of already done that. But this isn't data being a parent, not really. No. Uh, this is, you know, because he goes to Jordy for advice, and Jordy tells the story about how he was scared when he was in a fire when he was a kid. Um, and just, I, I think this exploration of data understanding, or even if he ever really does understand, because because everyone else goes along with it. Even even you know Crusher when when he's getting a checkup, Crusher speaks in robotic terminology to tell him that he's doing all right. Again, because she understands that, okay, he needs a little bit of encouragement here. He needs to feel comfortable. He's just lost both of his parents in a traumatic incident. I mean, we'll be lucky if he doesn't turn out to be Batman, quite frankly, <laughs> with what just happened to him. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I will say this. So when he finally opens up, right, because they, they, they get into a bit of trouble because they're looking for the, the perpetrators behind this, this ship attack. And the more they look into this, like, uh, cluster that's, like, nearby the ship, they, the more they do, do realise that the likelihood of anyone being in here, the likelihood of any type of ship or race using this as a battleground and why they would attack them is very unlikely. So it becomes more of a an idea that, well, something accidental probably happened. This is probably a phenomena rather than uh, an attack. Yeah. And then, of course, they start to get into trouble where... This this bubble thing, I can't remember what it was called, but this, you know, this thing's starting to grow, and it's like, oh shit, this is going to actually damage us. So they start to talk to the kid, because they kind of really need them to open up, and like, hey, if you know anything, kid, about what was going on the last time, you might want to bring it up. And it turns out, the kid actually thinks he's responsible for the murder, well, murder's maybe a harsh word, but the death of his parents and everyone on board, because he has hand hit the computer uh, when he tripped. It just so happened to be the same time as the the thing happening on the ship. I assume he tripped because of the thing. Like, Very possibly, yeah. But, you know, like, like, the thing happened, the ship rocked, and that's why he tripped, and then being a kid and his memory being a bit fuzzy in this incident has kind of merged it a little bit. 
Yeah, I was I was worried for a brief second. I was so glad that Troy immediately says, "No, no, this is a coincidence that this you, you touch." Because my first thought, as soon as the kid was saying this, was like, "Well, if there's a computer on the ship where if you just hit the one button accidentally, it will blow up half the ship." Then there's some it's serious flaws. Flaw. Yeah, that's a pretty bit. But immediately, every every single one in the rooms like, "No, no, no. Flaw, security flaw." <laughs> <laughs> but everyone in the rooms like, "No, no." Before you even could initiate anything, you have to like you know be. A valid user, you have to have your code. You, you know, like, and even once you do that, I'm pretty sure triggering something catastrophic like this would take at least a few button presses. Yeah, like, I'm willing <laughs> to accept there is a self destruct sort of sequence on there. Oh, there right? is. We, that, we, that, we know there is. Other, I don't remember it specifically, but it makes sense. It, it took both the captain and the first officer, and there was like a whole procedure. Was yeah. yeah, there was a I mean, whole thing. Like, it, it makes <laughs> sense that that's there, right? Because, yeah. uh, because. Especially, you know, as these, you know, the Federation has been in, you know, its fair share of wars at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you might want to not let your ship be captured. But importantly, it's not just a red button that you might accidentally hit yeah, yeah, <laughs> when that, you walk that, past it. That would be problematic. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the kid in his mind it blames himself for this, and they have to try and convince him that it's not his fault. And the kid kind of gets some sort of, like... Redemption, again, doesn't feel like the right word, but in his own mind it might be redemption because he actually helps save the Enterprise mm -hmm. because he gives Data the idea that the uh, turning up the shields are actually making things worse and all they have to do to survive this is to just turn off the shields because it's, it's, it's like a feedback kind of thing. Uh, and sure enough, this saves everyone and uh, it's like a big moment. I, I also kind of like, I mean, admittedly, I don't know why Data couldn't... I feel like the pause where Picard's deciding if he'll listen to Data when Data says turn off the shields and Riker goes that's suicide and there's like a pause before Picard like agrees to it where I felt like in that three seconds Data could have yelled out quickly the shields are making it stronger turn them off like but that said I did like that Picard chooses to trust Data's like actional opinion here like it's it's it, he just trusts that Data's figured it out don't question it just do it because because they do say it's like 10 seconds they don't have much time until yeah. they're probably uh, going to die. At that point, he might as well try anything, right? Yeah. But also, it, there's there's good reason why he would trust Data at this stage. Ab absolutely. Like, I, I like that he trusts him. I like that he takes leap of faith when there's no time for a proper explanation. But the amount of time he does take to accept it, I felt like a little bit of the explanation could have probably been yelled at him in that time, just to make it more convincing. But mm, Possibly. But, yeah. I, I, but I also like the fact that he doesn't need it. It's just like... Yeah. No, no, he's got it in the control. Let's just do what he says. I, I, you know, no one else has any ideas. Let's yeah, so... Neat thing. Uh, the end of the stuff with the kid is basically that he still wants to be friends with Data, and he's worried that Data won't want to because he's not an android anymore, and he's like, I have many human friends. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yes. Well, no, no Worf. Well, no, not human, but yeah. non-androids was sure. what I meant specifically here, which is what the kid is talking about. Yeah, and uh, Troy's half half beta zoid, you know, there's, there's, there's a bit of variety in yeah, his friends. Yeah. Um, there is. And none, none are androids. None are androids. Point. Sh sure. Yeah. Okay. Take your victory, I guess. I will. I will cherish it. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, you know, it's just got a sweet enough ending. Uh, it, it's a very standalone episode with... Not a lot in it that I would say feels like, like I say, there's enough in it to make you uh, for me, me to understand why they felt this was distinct enough to want to do it. And I do think that the idea of data kind of encountering this trauma and fear of a child is, you know, along with everything else he's had to learn about human beings and how they react to things, the idea of how a child reacts to something like this and how they might have to have this coping mechanism to get through it. Is interesting enough that I get why it exists as an episode, but at the same time, I don't think it's distinct enough or does anything super wonderful with it. Where I I feel it on the other end, where I'm like, oh, this was a, a great episode, where it's like a, a must see story or anything like that. It's the the biggest credit I can give it is that I watched this episode probably three weeks ago when I thought we were going to record this, and then scheduling mm -hmm. things arised, and I still remember like I, I didn't rewatch any of this. I, I just, you know, this is all memory. Like, I, I remember it all pretty distinctly, which I can't say for every episode, to be fair. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's got that going for it, at least. Yeah. Uh, the, the one sort of 
piece in it that I've kind of glossed over that I did want to mention was uh, there's a there's a moment to show that he's kind of struggling. He's in class and the, the the class are reading from a book or something, and he's still putting this model together uh, of a of a palace or something like that. And the teacher's like, "Hey, you know, why don't you do we do that? That you know, sculpture time's done. This uh, we're moving on to this." And he's still kind of obsessed with doing this. Next time we see him, and data comes in. And they they kept talking about building his model or building whatever, and it was this is like a really minor thing. Right? This is a nitpicky thing, but it was really bugging me how at no point was n- anything ever actually like either fastened or glued together. It was just like everything was sitting like a deck of cards, like all these little pillars that he was putting up, and. Data like quickly like finishes it and then blah, 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 it's done. And I'm like, well, it's not done because if you bump it, the whole thing's just going <laughs> to crumble to the ground. I don't know. It, the whole thing just felt a bit weird to me. I get where you're coming from. I would say uh, either t- two things. One, uh-huh. it's got some Lego esque adhesive that just it just sticks together. Future stuff. Don't question it. We, we see it fall apart when he tries to put the uh, top bit on. We do, but once it's in place, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Okay, all right. Right. Or two, Maybe that's part of the, the, the point of it. The challenge is, no, it, it will be stable and hold itself upright. We, you know, like like you say, like a like a card tower pyramid. Mm-hmm. Like it will hold itself upright. It's stable because that's the design of it. And that's that's the point of the architecture that it's replicating. Okay, okay. I, I can accept that. Of course, the difference is with the real structure is that that concrete in whatever is made of is so heavy that it will withstand a bit of wind. <laughs> that's fair but also there's not often a breeze inside a starship oh, I don't know when Worf's walking around a bit of huffing and puffing uh, I feel <laughs> <laughs> point taken <laughs> I feel Hail like back. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I don't know it was just it was, it was something it was, it was sort of like I, I, I felt the kid was been especially dumb when he tries to put this top bit on when he's only put up one side of the top part and I'm like, of course it's not going to stay on top. You've only put up one side of it. But, but how stupid are you, you idiot child? Like, I don't care if your yes, parents just you died. Stupid ten-year-old. <laughs> look, look. If I, if I have one bottle here and I get one bottle here and I might put like a bar across the top. If I try to put the bar up before I put the second bottle there, of course it's just going to fall down. You, this is this is like three-year-old building block logic. This is not difficult. This is not rocket science. I mean, I think it could be done. Maybe Troy and Crusher should be checking for uh, brain damage uh, after the incident because I'm a lot I'm concerned. Sure she checked. <laughs> I'm, I'm like eighty percent sure she checked. I trust Crusher is your job properly. I've yeah, never had that, any reason that to. Seems like something you should check when there's been a, a ship explosion or whatever you want to describe it as. Yes, I, I've never had any reason to doubt Crusher's. Uh, ability to do her job. Unlike Troy, who feels like she's coasting on like a, a fake degree that she got from an online university. Uh, <laughs> she definitely got a posting like well above her pay station like on the Enterprise instead of some random other place. And now she's like, shit, I need to justify this. It's basically, if you go back to the start of the good place, she got she got sent here by accident and she's just sort of bluffing her way through it. Uh, and she lied in her CV is what happened. <laughs> She 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 put spe- under special skills, strong empathic abilities, <laughs> and now it's like they're, 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 they're mild empathic abilities. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I, I can sense it when someone's like really passionate about something. I can sense it. At which point, everyone can tell what they feel anyway. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play it up on your CV. So you get the job. Oh dear. Um. There you go, that's the episode. It's, it's an alright one. It's not bad. Not great. It's, uh... Yeah. So, the At Love special. Uh, so, next up on Next Generation. Are you mad that I referenced Chernobyl? It's like it a- took me, like, half a second. like, what was that? And I was like, oh, yeah, that. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been- You're the actor who played the At Love passed away this year. Did he? Yeah. I, he had a... I, I think it was a... I think it was a brain tumor he had. Uh, but, yeah. It was, shock- it was quite shocking. It was just all out of nowhere. Because he was only in his like, mid-late 50s. He wasn't... I say, he wasn't like, oh, obviously. Yeah. So, anywho, I mean, on that like depressing note, uh, next episode is called Violations. Uh, and here's the description on IMDb. Transporting three Yulian mind-probing historians, the Enterprise crew is uh, stymied. 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 
means like you're there's an obstacle in your way. You're stuck. Okay. Okay, fair enough. I actually just didn't know what that word was. Uh, the crew are stymied when some of its members fall into a coma. Diana Choi, <laughs> the first crew member to come through it, cannot recall anything surrounding the incident. <laughs> oh! So we've got a full episode about Troy being a <laughs> useless person. <laughs> oh, I hate this. What did we do to deserve this? <laughs> oh. Yes, yeah, violations it's called. Violation of our time. Uh, so, um, oh. look forward to that next time. And you'll be delighted to know, because we know that obviously the schedule's been very inconsistent with these Trek reviews recently. Uh, we're recording the next episode tomorrow, so you're getting two in a row no matter what. Uh, so, do not worry uh, on that front. And we're hopefully going to keep these a bit more consistent going forward. Uh, and I know we say that every time there's been a, a weird gap, but we, we have been trying. We, we legitimately have been trying. Yeah, my work schedule's been terrible. I've been working like six days a week, most weeks. My one day off last week, things happened, came up and it was like, oh, we can't actually do anything that day now. <laughs> yeah, it's been tough, uh, but we'll see you next week for episode 12 of the season, uh, and hopefully 13 after that. So uh, let us know what you think of this episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe, ding the bell for notifications. All of those things help out on YouTube and help the channel grow. And you can, of course, support us financially over at patreon.com slash TV for as little as $1 per month. And get some bonuses for your troubles. So go and have a look and see if you want to do any of that. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. And I should probably mention, because Star Trek Discovery Season 4 is launching... In a few weeks' time, uh, I want to say it's the eighth. Really? It's the eighteenth of November. I want to say now. Connor's been a uh, off duty schedule, not been on new TV reviews recently. Uh, and when I mentioned this to Tara, she had this sort of look where it was like, "Well, I'm not letting you do that on your own." There's no way Star Trek's not not getting a second person. So uh, Tara will be filling in on new Trek episodes uh, for the time being. So uh, look forward to that. And she's seen all the Trek, so she she knows. I, I will try and keep up just so that we can reference it every so often like we tend to do oh sure yeah yeah so uh that's hitting uh in a few weeks time uh, and then i think picard is back in like february so i mean there's a lot of trek coming right and the new nickelodeon show just started prodigy that just started this like past week so yeah a lot, a lot Did you of, get that or not a lot of i haven't yet i was going to check out the pilot uh, and see how it is but uh, i haven't had a look at it yet um but i've, I've heard good things no, that's uh, cool. Uh, so neat. Uh, but that is uh, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching Star Trek. And somewhere out there, Wesley Crusher is in complete control of his little empathic abilities more than Troy is.